Hi, this is Mike Human at Flash Memory Summit 2019. Uh, we're doing our In the Hot Seat interviews, and in the hot seat today is Olivier Louvre. Olivier is the EVP of, uh, let me get this straight, sales and marketing uh, for data center operations at CalRange. Is that correct? Uh, we can say that. Oh, very <laughs> good. Okay. So it's good to have you here. Uh, we'll, we'll try to keep the seat from getting too hot, keep it nice. <laughs> Thank you. So tell me a little bit about what you're announcing at the show this year. Okay, so Calray is doing a uh, processor and uh, NIC card, and uh, what uh, we have been showing and announcing is uh, uh, dual mode reconfigurable uh, Rocky and NVMe TCP uh, uh, card. Oh, very so good. That's uh, running uh, up to 2.5 million IOPS on a single card. And, wow. Uh, so that's, uh, that's quite good. Excellent. And, uh, the other thing that we have been announcing is that we have been uh, tipping out our new processor that will allow us to boost things to uh, 9 million IOPS per, wow. uh, per card. So that's our expectation, and uh, we are working hard on that. So Excellent. Uh, so that's, uh, that has been a good show for us and uh, a good discussion about uh, with uh, customer hope to uh, move forward. Uh, we are building compositional uh, offer, nice. uh, both from uh, storage and uh, initiator standpoint, uh, okay. both target and initiator as well as all the uh, compute and algorithmic acceleration and offloading that we can do with our processors. Very so nice. All of this together. So. Well, obviously, NVMe over fabric is a big topic this year mm -hmm. at, at Flash Memory Summit. And, you know, there's always this kind of, I, I like to call it a fight, but a, a brotherly, um, you know, kind of, kind of rivalry between NVMe over Rocky and NVMe over TCP. You guys have decided to support both. What what kind of drove you to that decision? Well, I think uh, well first, I mean, NVMe over uh, Fabric Rocky um, took some time. I mean, to to mature sure. and deploy, and we have seen the need for flexibility. Yes. And our technology, because we have uh, very flexible technologies, yes, uh, allow us to do both. So you can have one card and reconfigure that one way or the other, uh, depending on what you need. And you can right. even run both on the same chip if you wish. There's oh, not that's a lot very of use nice. cases for that. But, <laughs> but, but if there was one, you could support it. That would be exactly. good. Yes, exactly. So, so that's yeah, exactly. Tell me a custom which protocol they should use is usually not, not a good way to spend your time. Exactly. So that, that makes a lot of sense. Um, are you seeing any particular use cases where you've seen one or the other kind of be more powerful. I know a lot of people talk about NVMe over Rocky for um, hyperconverged infrastructure, mm -hmm. um, but have you guys seen? And also, you said you do smart NICs. So can you tell me a little bit about that? Yeah. So so basically, I mean, uh, with all processor and, and smart card and card, basically we are addressing different configuration. Okay. And the smart NICs is one of the configuration okay, where excellent. we can uh, basically we integrate all the NIC functions uh, with uh, compute functions and protocol management functions. So we can use it either as a target or in the initiator space or as a smart NIC for uploading TLS, erasure coding, or okay. this kind of thing. So you could be the, the total management solution for just a box of flash enclosures, for instance. Yeah, you, usually, I mean, the uh, there is a strategy of software that is playing into this yes. between legacy software and new software and so on. So uh, the, the beauty of this is that we do things that are programmable in a standard way so people can migrate their software from their, for example, x86 environment yes. to uh, some of it uh, being accelerated or offloaded on our right. environment and depending on what's the best uh, TCO. Yeah, yeah, no, that makes perfect sense. Makes perfect sense. So what other big trends have you seen at the show? I mean, there's a lot of talk about things like computational storage, AI, things like that. Um, yeah. You know, I, I'm sure that with your, your, the power of your process, you play into some of those areas, right? Yeah, so we hear that, I mean, both adding things to, uh, yes. uh, and maybe uh, things at the SSD level, things at the SmartNIC level, right. or things at the uh, chassis management level, sure, uh, or even rack uh, level. Yeah. But the um, uh, the way we see it is that it's just a premise of a co more compositional or composable, I don't know, depending on the <laughs> term that people are using, um, the uh, composable approach, where yeah. uh, depending on your architecture, you have the choice and you have to 
have the flexibility right. uh, in terms of implementing different functions uh, uh, depending on your global architecture. You may have created a new architecture, composable computation perhaps. Maybe no, I, I think actually <laughs> we hear more composable storage yes. and then our software defined storage, yes. uh, composable uh, compute, composable, uh, uh, I mean, basically what that means is that people want to have the flexibility yeah. of migrating function in a different level of the architecture. Yeah, and disaggregation certainly allows people to That's do that much easier. That's part of it, but right. when, when it's come in the other side of the spectrum, there is also the edge computing, which is more yes. kind of packing everything together. Yes. And this is where we believe we have a play with our new processor, is that uh, uh, packing networking uh, management, right. uh, all the, some of the compute uh, necessary right. uh, locally, uh, AI, both from a training and uh, from an inference standpoint, yes. to adapt to the context, and uh, being able to do also the stor local storage for and edge aggregation. And certainly in the edge, you don't have the space and the power and the cooling capabilities. That's you have point. to just put regular servers there. So you know, disaggregating some of that and putting into smart NICs or smart storage makes a lot of sense. Yeah, and, uh, and we keep everything under the 20 watt uh, power envelope. Wow, so that's so impressive. That's, uh, what we are trying to do, and um, that's keep us relevant, uh, let's say, for the edge. Yes, um, yes, exactly, so. exactly. Well, that, that's really great. Are there any other things you want to talk about that you guys are going to announce in the near future, or? No, it's uh, <laughs> too, too early to announce. <laughs> you, you, you have to have surprises left for, for the next uh, trade show. Exactly. Oh, excellent. So. Well, thank, thank you, you very much, Olivier. It was thank great you. talking to you. Thank you.